I I want to know because I haven't been in a relationship past four years. Okay. So okay. I don't know like what. How about the current one? Where you at now? I'm at three years now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, one more. One more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, what's up? It's Sonia. Welcome to another episode of Men Explain. Thank you so much for your love and support. Today, though, is going to be an interesting topic because I feel like when it comes to falling in love, that's the easy part, right? It's easy to see someone, you think someone's cute, you fall in love. But the next part is maintaining a long-term relationship. We're going to talk about temptations, loyalty, how to maintain that long-term relationship. And it's so funny because my guest today is a guy that I apparently sort of grew up with. He reminded me about it when we met uh, due to work. Please welcome John. Hello everyone, I'm John from MOSG and Vulcan Post and Gravity Media. I've been with my wife for 13 years this year. Very much in love. At least for me, I don't know about her. So tell me a little bit about the background of your relationship. I understand you met your current wife at a very young age. Yes. So we met at, in secondary school when we were 15. Mm. We were in different class. Actually, the circumstances were quite strange. Yeah. And there was this guy that, that liked her. Ah, uh, okay. And then he told me mm. um, to be his wingman. Oh, oh my god. Oh, so you... So, no way, hold up. Okay, I'm okay, not okay. done yet. And so I did. So, and okay. so I did. But I remember when we first made conversation, yeah, right? I yeah. kind of told myself that um, while in another life, yeah. I would really like to date her. Like, wow. Yeah, because she kind of feels like... You vibe. Vibe. Yeah. Beyond vibe. Yeah. It's a... Uh, Chemistry, connection. Correct. Okay. You know, like she gets me, I get her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. <laughs> but back then, I think uh, I was on the verge of starting my first relationship. Or already Ooh. in... Perhaps lah. I see. Um, but your heart wasn't church. exactly there. No, oh, okay, no, oh, not true. Oh, so. not true. Okay. Oh, oh, met from church. Met from okay. church. Yeah, right. she was my first love. I see. Um, okay. but that that lasted one and a half years. It was okay, a good, nice. it was a good relationship. Mm. Um, I think as good as any first love can be. Yeah. And then Pat called me. So my wife's Patrina, right? Yes. Um, she called me and just to talk about a heartbreak or something like really? that. Really, out some of nowhere. Guy she liked. Yeah. Were you, were you guys keeping in touch along? Not the way? really, like off okay. and on. Um, yeah. but I think she, what we did have is the ability to heart to heart each other immediately. Yes, we don't need yes. to set context here, set yeah, context yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Like she just tell me her stuff and like, you know, I kind of feel that baggage. Mm. So you you don't have to like probe and get through the other nonsense again, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, and so I think she wanted someone like that for her again. Right. And so she called me and it's about other guy, this other guy, Desmond Chua. It's about you. <laughs> What's up, Desmond? <laughs> yeah. No, we're friends as well. Yeah, and then that, that's how we kind of reconnected actually. Mm, mm. Um, and... Yeah, and, and, and since then, I, no, then I fell in love with her again. Okay. I think I was very excited. I dressed up for that date. My... Wait, wait, wait. So, how did it escalate to the date? Okay, it was not a date. Like, it was, to me, it, it was, was a, a date. casual hang. To her, it was yeah. a reunion hang. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we tap out sushi because we were broke and shit. Uh-huh. So, we tap out sushi from Cold Storage and uh-huh. then we go to Esplanade and just talk more. And then back then, I realised, oh my god, like, everything I felt about her was still there. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, and then we started getting closer again. We started hanging out a lot. Mm. And then one day I asked her to be my girlfriend. She said no. What? Plot <laughs> twist. Plot <laughs> twist. So she she said she you know she she doesn't feel the same at least <gasps> not yet. Yeah, but she considers me her best friend and stuff oh like that. Oh my god. Yeah, so it was quite tough, but it was not terrible because at that point in my life, um, we went to poly year one. So okay. then we turned eighteen ready. Uh, uh, so got other other girls lah. Ye- I mean not say other girls <laughs> lah. Other distractions. You know. Yeah, but influx <laughs> of friends, you know. Of course. Um. Girls that weren't pretty before in secondary school suddenly become very pretty because they all get to dress up, you see them in their own clothes, they wear makeup and stuff, everybody looks hot. Right. Right? And then I started a band. So I had that going for me. Yes. So that distracted me from my heartbreak very easily. She to be didn't honest. go to the same school as you, same poly. She did. Oh, she did. She did. Another interesting fun fact though. Okay. Um, When she knew the course I was going to go into, yeah. she said, There's this guy, I used to date him. Okay. Uh, don't make friends with him. And then he was the first friend I made. Oh my god. She's, <laughs> so we had that chat a few months ago. I completely forgot. So my memory is shit, right? Mm-hmm. And then we, and then we went to Polly and then she's like, how's orientation? I'm like, oh then fine, I made a lot of friends. It's like oh, this <laughs> guy, this I think guy. be my like, you know, BFF. <laughs> uh then it's like Marcus. Marcus! Oh. Marcus, like, you know, Marcus, you know who you are. Also, I formed a band with him. Oh my god. Yeah. So John, we, you did the I don't know one I did. thing she said. I did everything don't do. I'm not supposed to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so then, then how did you cross this bridge and eventually get into a relationship? Right, eventually, she kind of called me and, and, and then say she feels something for me and then she want to get together. Law. And when was this? How long after this whole debacle she realised that she had feelings for you? 
like a month and a half. Oh, um, okay, oh I know what happened. Oh, oh, what happened? She travelled to Hong Kong with her family. Ah, uh, okay. When she went there, she realised that she wanted to keep calling me and mm. she wrote letters for me one a day every oh. day. Yeah, and then that's when she came back um, and gave me one whole stack of handwritten letters. Both are handwriting oh, like shit, wow. but hers is cute lah. Um, yeah, so I still have it. I still, I we oh, read it. Cute. Like I, I read it every few years. Like. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So then the rest is history, like You never looked back and questioned it ever again. Never. That's great. Never. I mean, you know, for a lot of us, we are very envious also of a relationship like this because some people, even some of my friends, they can spend years traveling, you know, working overseas, meeting mm. tons of people, and yet they just cannot meet the right one. But you mm. feel like you met the one, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. sure. So what does the the word loyalty mean to you then in that case I just want to bring this up because it's one of our main focuses of today loyalty what, what does it mean uh? yeah what? it it's can so be your tough. own interpretation what right? does it mean to you well I think to me loyalty is when you truly have found a person that makes you f- you better as a mm. person and you make a conscious decision to stay loyal to this person because everywhere we go there's going to be a lot of temptation right mm. like i don't know if you agree we can agree to disagree doesn't matter mm. but for me i i used to as a teenager party a lot okay no secret there. I used to party a lot. <laughs> Sorry, um, you can and Google this is that. a safe space. No judgment, okay? I used to go out a lot, party a lot, drink a lot. So that that was where I met, you know, a lot of people. I got yeah. together with uh, some guys back then as well in school. And I feel like at the point in my life, right, I, I wasn't ready for a serious relationship. Mm. Because I was still fishing. I was still looking around. I was having fun, you know. And I didn't make conscious decisions to be the best that I could be in a relationship. That's how I felt mm. at the point. So, yeah, I think loyalty is a lot of conscious decision-making. By both lah. By both lah, yeah. I feel like loyalty is not possible with everyone. Mm. Like, you can be a loyal person by nature, mm. but if you're not with the right partner, yeah, yeah, loyalty feels like a huge trade-off. Mm. And I think Pat and I struggled with that. Oh, really? My first real job was in the influencer marketing industry. Yeah. So my first colleagues and the first clients, mm. the influencers per se, right? Mm. Were some of the best looking, most popular people in Singapore. I right. See. And there were some she'd get um very She wouldn't feel so good. Yeah, about it. you know, yeah. She, yeah. she she feels very insecure for some of them. Like, yes. Very particular few only. And to me that limits me. Mm. You know, as much as I feel like I do I don't want to be the guy that's not loyal. I yeah. don't want to be a bad boyfriend. But if being a good boyfriend to you mm. means I can't enjoy other aspects of life. And I don't mean multiple relationships yeah, and yeah, like yeah, sex yeah, parties yeah. and all yeah, that stuff, yeah. right? I mean like going to a party with some influencers. Yeah. It's still fun. You know what I mean? No, you don't no, need to be romantic. No one's having involved. sex with no oh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. It's just a fun thing. You, yeah. you know, I'm going to party with celebrities. Yeah. I want to hang out with my friends, my colleagues yeah. with, for drinks and all that stuff. Yeah. And if that becomes a problem for you, mm. that to you breaches your definition of loyalty. Yeah. Then that to me will feel like loyalty to you means hindering mm. my my life ah. yeah. yeah and it shouldn't feel that way like Correct. relationships shouldn't feel that hard and I mean I myself have had ex-boyfriends I'm not gonna name them but you know they're all lovely in their <laughs> own ways mean that, name okay. all of ex- <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're all wonderful in their own way and you know I had lots of learning sure. experiences you know as well in life and, and love but there's definitely a difference like obviously now I'm, I'm in a happy relationship right and, yeah. and I think the main difference when it comes to that is that you know Jeremy doesn't hinder me like you said mm he totally understands. Like, oh, this is your industry. You're going to hang out with hot, young guys, whoever it may be that you mm. meet along the way. And he has to be okay with it, right? Mm. And he makes a conscious effort to be okay with it. He comes along with me to, to the parties mm. or, you know, whatever it is that makes you both feel better. Mm. If it makes her feel better, if you bring her along, you would, right? I would. Yeah, exactly. If she don't want to come. Right. Mm. Okay, okay. But that has changed along the years. Actually, I have oh. changed. I just I stopped showing up for these oh. things. So. <laughs> But but not because of her. No, no, yeah. And you grow out of it as well. You grow out of it too. So, um, some interesting statistics that we we saw. And by the way, disclaimer, this is all based on statistics, which it could be a smaller group of people. Which might not be you, like yeah, trigger means we're not talking about you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is all not representative of everybody who's tuning in right now, okay? So there was a research done in twenty eighteen by the Institute for Family Studies that the percentage of men and women who cheat are twenty percent men and 13% women. That seems about right. And then, okay, to add on to that, apparently the gender cheating gap widens as we age. Older guys tend to cheat more than older women. What do you think about that? 
Sounds about right. <laughs> He's agreeing <laughs> with all the studies. I mean, I'm very mainstream as a person. I never miss it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see. Yeah. <laughs> some stereotypes are forming here, right? Yeah. And some assumptions are made. But yeah. when I think when a man gets older, yeah. usually that kind of brings more financial stability. Okay. And okay. I think right now it's changing. But for men, the income the income growth is exponential compared to women. So here's the thing. A lot of women are becoming very uh, financially independent. They're yeah. so successful. Um, some more successful than their partners or yeah. in, in their clique of friends or whatever. Do you think that also with that financial independence, does that threaten their partners? And then therefore they look for, I don't know, other other girls that may be a bit more dependent oh, on Oh, isn't them? that the Crazy Rich Asian plot? Yeah, maybe. Huh? You know? Like, I, I mean, once maybe. again, this doesn't, you know, this you doesn't know, represent... I had an like interesting that. chat with my, yeah. with my friend, I think just yesterday... She asked me, would would it be okay if Pat just wants to retire and stay at home mm-hmm. and I, I make the money? Yeah. And my answer was, in theory, yes. Yeah. Like, if I make enough to cover both of our lifestyles. Yeah. But then what I realised is that the problem is if Pat doesn't make money enough mm. money for herself yeah. and is self-sustainable, yes. I feel like when we have major arguments and they will come from time to time and mm. we stop speaking from our heart mm. and we start speaking from our asshole, right? Yeah. There will be conversations whereby we are not shouting at each other on an even playing field. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, she might be at home and settling everything for me. Take care of my hypothetical children. Yes. Or whatever lah. Maybe she fixes the TV and whatnot, right? Yes. Even if she did that, in a fight, I'll be like, I can always get someone to do that. What's your value to the relationship? Understand. I'm yeah. not saying that I will say that or we no, threaten but, each but other. No, but sometimes you say things out of anger that you don't mean Correct. in that moment as well. And yeah. then the party that doesn't work or is less financially sustained for this lifestyle would always feel really insecure. Yes. Yeah, and I think that kind of threatens who they are as a person. Mm. Yeah. The even ground, I feel like the even ground is important. Like right now, if Pat and I split, if we fight, she can go out and she can book a hotel room. That's not a problem. She's mm. financially... Um, independent. Independent. Yeah. Yeah, or I, I can go out and do hotel room. You know, it's fine. Mm. Yeah, and there's sexiness to that to me. Oh. Um, and beyond that, like, I just feel like if there's an imbalance and we fight, right, every fight would be 10 times more painful for the other person yeah. than to the person of power. Have you ever been tempted to cheat on Pat? Or has she ever been tempted to cheat on you? And have you guys had this conversation before? An open conversation? I think, especially in our industry, there's a lot of temptation. Mm-hmm. Do you... Do you act on it? Do you explore it? It's a choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And and there are many times, I think, mm. that I've been tempted. Mm, okay. But I wouldn't... Yeah, you didn't. Not, yeah, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I don't need your help to cover up for me. Yeah. I never, I never. <laughs> we, can, we do not talk about this at all before the camera started rolling, okay? FYI. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, okay. I've, I've never, but yes, I've been tempted multiple times, I think. So, so here's a question as well. Like, if, if, okay... Uh. Either one of you decides to be like, hey, you know, I found this person very attractive. Would you be okay if I slept with this person? Would you ever foresee this conversation? Because sometimes, okay, and I've had this conversation with my friends before where we said, would you rather your partner cheat on you or your partner be open about him or her wanting to sleep with someone else? Right. Would you be open to having this conversation with her? I would like to think I would be. But but not in the way you set it up. Okay. Not in the way okay. you set it up. So it's not, I found this person, would you be okay? Okay, okay. It's maybe, like no choice, wa. you want me to leave you or not, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's more yeah. like, shall we oh, explore? Oh. Whether or not together. Oh, okay. But shall we explore? Then we go and find that person. What do you mean you go and find a person first, then you bring the follow to me? You know <laughs> okay. what I mean? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I get it. It I has get to it. be mentally the stage, that step we make together. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes you talk about like spicing a relationship up or, you know, like keeping it fresh, right? Yes. How do you do that? What kind of gestures do you do you do or do you use to spice things up? If any Like in like in life or in like in bed? I mean <laughs> the in bed life is part of life, so you know, anything. Not really. <laughs> to me, right, I'm quite detached from sex in the relationship. Oh. To really? me it's two separate acts. I don't see it as the same thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. Not not that it's okay for her to cheat and Yeah. But but hits up might actually be enough for me. Right. You know? Okay. Um to me sex is sex. Okay. And Pat and I, because we've been together for thirteen years. Yeah. We've gone like three to four months without sex. And it doesn't bother wow. us. Oh, it doesn't bother you. Okay. Maybe it bothers her, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you don't believe that um in order to have a f- relationship, a long term relationship going, you need to have a regular I think it's sex important life. at the front of a re- at the start of a relationship. Oh. But that's me la. Okay. And I realized that. No, no, 
no, no. I, I, I want to know because I haven't been in a relationship past four years. Okay, so okay. I don't know like what How about the current after... one? Where are you at now? I'm at three years now. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one more. One more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but that's the thing, right? So I, I'm just wondering beyond the four years or because right. three, four years might still seem pretty young of a relationship. Yeah, yeah. You know, you never really uh, compared to like 13 years. Mm. So past four years, past 10 years, I'm just wondering what happens right. then. Like, you know. Like, you're going to find this amount of ways to fuck and then that's yeah, about it, right? 99.9% <laughs> of your life is something else, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I see like, where you're going. Yeah, yeah like yeah, how yeah, else yeah. you're gonna spread? How else you're gonna have sex? Where yeah. else you're gonna have sex? After that you're done, you're done. Yeah. Some people might have a lot of um answers to that lah. Earlier on when we were talking about men cheating, women cheat as well. That's what Yes. Sure. So what's your take on that? Like have you heard of stories, personal experiences, friends, I don't know, people who have, have a lot. bros who have told you like, Oh man, you know, my, my girlfriend cheated me, my wife cheated me, having an affair. You heard of these stories? A lot. Can you share any with us? So what I realised there's a slight pattern here, especially when the girl side mm. when was is unfaithful, mm. it's a lot of self worth problems. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I mean, which I mean, both parties might have something to play, yeah. like a part to play, but more of they feel, I won't say unloved because that, that feels very basic. Yeah. Um, they feel insufficient. Insufficient in what way? Like they're getting Perhaps you are with an accomplished man. Okay, okay. Perhaps your relationship is at a stage whereby you're very comfortable telling each other what you like and don't like mm. about each other. Mm-hmm. And the things that your partner might not like about you is something that you feel either you might not want to change or someone else is crazy about that right. for you. Right. You so know? you do you feel like sometimes we look for things that are obviously lacking in our current relationship and then sometimes when these people find it outside with mm. others they suddenly feel like the spark is there again. Mm. And like the, the 80-20 rule. Have you heard about that in no, a relationship? No, what is that? What's the 80-20 rule? So some people have a partner that's 80% right for them. Okay. But because of that yearning of that 20%, yeah. they might see that someone else out there can give them that 20%. Mm. And then they throw away 80% just to be with 20% to find out that really? they now only have 20%. Wow. You know, it's how you're in a very stable, boring guy, but everything works. Yeah. As it should. Some, but you, you want like that danger excitement, but the guy's a criminal, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you decide to scratch the itch outside. So you go and scratch the itch. <laughs> yeah, then yeah. 90% of them regret. I mean, if then this guy is the one, then you marry him and have kids, then good luck, right? Yeah, good yeah, for yeah. you. you yeah. It was a good jump. Exactly. Yeah, 90% of them regret it, right? Oh, man. So personally, how do you stay loyal? So I'll be, I'll be very honest. I mean, I've come across many situations and I've met people as well that have presented mm. themselves as, you know, a form of temptation, right? You, mm. know, you go out, you go to events, you party. Many people that you can click with, connect with, you know, and in the spur of the moment, you're like, wow, like, this mm. person is so awesome. Like, w- why didn't I meet this guy earlier kind of thing? But then when I look back at it and when I think of my relationship with, with Jeremy, I go back to my answer of making conscious decisions because I feel like when you are drinking and when you're drunk you may make a lot of bad decisions Mm. sometimes involuntary decisions sometimes you wake up you're like what the hell did I just do Mm. what just happened where am I how did I get home and I think at some point I just hated being that person as well Mm. and I decided that hey you know this guy means a lot to me I don't want to fuck this up like Mm. I definitely don't want to mess this up again because I foresee ourselves having a future together Mm. and if I take the risk again I mean I'm not the the crazy 18 year old that I used to be that's just going to be like ah yeah I'll wake up tomorrow and find another boyfriend you know kind of mentality right I'm like I want to build a life with this person you know Mm. so I think all in all when you think of it as as a whole and you definitely mature in your thinking along the way as well that coupled together with couples counselling I feel mm. it really helps and have I'm you not, tried? yes we have right I'm not afraid to like admit it because um, for the two of us we feel like sometimes we need a third person to check in on us you mm. know sometimes you just don't see it you're in this bubble you're fighting about the same things you're mm. bringing up the same problems same insecurities we cannot like detach ourselves away from that Right. Yeah. So I feel like having a third person come in and go like, okay, you know, Sonia, this, this, Jeremy, this and that. Mm. I think it was very, very helpful and we're in a much better place wow. now. Yeah. So, um, Jones, I hope you don't mind that I shared that. But I think it's very helpful because a lot of people actually did ask me about it after. Like my friends and all are now considering doing that. Even though there may not be anything immediately wrong with the relationship, yeah. it doesn't hurt to have a third person check in, yeah. I feel. Yeah. It, it's not a doctor per se. It's more like a physical trainer. Right. right. You, you don't okay. need to be obese to go to a trainer. Yeah, you just want to keep fit. Yeah. You just want to stay healthy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Here's a tip, right? Yeah. I don't know whether it helped. I learned this in engagement engagement encounter. Oh. So it's not I like con- I was thinking about that also. Engagement encounter. You, yeah, you need to do that, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It's a it's a Catholic thing. Yeah. The one thing I remember and yeah. we try and practice a lot is that whenever we're having an argument, so we're not fighting for the sake of fighting, right? I'm not okay. trying to piss you off. We join hands. Okay. And then we talk. Oh. Because the element and, of touch and it does works that in okay. a sense whereby you are trying to get past something. Yeah. As opposed to, I'm trying to hurt your feelings to make a point. Right, which right, right. is 80% of a fight. <sighs> trying I to hurt your feelings so you relate. give me the attention. Yeah, we can all relate to that. Yeah, Most of the fights I realize take place when you don't acknowledge what I'm feeling. Yeah. Or to you, what I feel is a small deal. Mm. Yeah, but it's not. It's a big deal. And so what I do in return is I try to hurt your feelings back. Yeah. By stabbing your ego or stabbing yeah. your stability in life. Yeah, you just hit it where it hurts, lah, basically. Correct. Usually. But sometimes not to hurt them, just to get them to look at where you are hurt. Yes. So hold hands. Yes, hold hands. Talk. Got it. Mm. Thanks. We're going to print that on a t-shirt when our official <laughs> merch comes out. Hold hands and fight. Has marriage, however, changed your relationship in any way? I think it makes me a lot more focused in life. Oh. Because it's a very powerful feeling. Yeah. Many people can't see who they'll be and what they'll be surrounded with at 60. I can. Yeah. Like, at least I can see some are variables, mm. but pets beside me. Oh. And that's a very, very powerful feeling that we always... Yes. Like, we make a, a religious and a legal pledge, right? That we're going to have each other's backs forever until we die. Eh? Yeah. How that's sick is huge. That? Who wants that's to sign huge. that with you? You know what I mean? I managed to find a hot girl managed to yeah, sign yeah. that with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So anything you want to say to her on that note? Like you want to thank her for... No, I mean, thanks for signing <laughs> <laughs> Such a powerful feeling. You're so focused after that. Yeah, like right. very little things in life matters thereafter. That's a very interesting yeah. point of view because obviously I'm not married yet and I yeah. also want to know like from your Might point of view. Might as well be like, like, you're like no, so I mean, sheep you know, really. Uh, every okay, time you post like. some photo, you'll be like sheep, sheep. I don't <laughs> know what that means. <laughs> so any last words when it comes to long-term relationships, loyalty, keeping the spark going? Okay, in my experience of one person, yes. in my one China life, I want to say that I think loyalty takes both parties, mm-hmm. right? And loyalty should not mean ownership or slavery. If me being loyal to the other person requires me to sacrifice a lot of elements of my life, why do I want to be loyal? And I think what makes Pat and I work is that we kind of understand that for each other. Mm, okay. Yeah. Very nicely said. I if hope you're fighting that. about chores, yeah. outsource. <laughs> What's That's that my number me? one because tip for couple <laughs> advice. I hate doing chores. Outsource. <laughs> Noted. I'm gonna. Mm. I, I'm, I took a lot of notes today, by the way. I'm okay, just gonna okay. save this whole recording okay, for okay. future reference. Yeah. Sure. John, thank you so much for being with us today. I mean, Thanks for having me. It was literally like 10 years worth, 20 years worth of catch up in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> if you like what you watched, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And let us know what you think about this episode in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.